Hi everybody and welcome back to School at Home. I'm Kathy. This is the fourth video on setting up your schooling at home uh, classroom curriculum, etc. Put toys down. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you about supplemental materials. Things that you might not necessarily think about but are great activities to include in your curriculum or materials that can be useful just because and nobody thinks about them. I'm going to get started with a company that I used for a lot of my games and supplemental material, uh, and that is Oriental Trading Company. Everyone's going to sit there and go, what? The, the prize pack company? You know, the ones that give you the little frisbees and little hand clappers and things like that that your teacher used to hand out, the pencils your teacher used to hand out from their treasure chests. Same company, but they make a whole bunch of schooling supplies something you may or may not have known. Um, I'm going to start with my personal favorite. I call these brain breaks. I think that's what they call them too. But these blocks have different activities on them. As you can see, they're all, they're all different. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Roar like a dinosaur and make a scary face. These are things you can do in between your actual lessons. You can have one child or your child if you're only, you know, if you only have one that's, that's you know, one of the kids can pick these up, roll it, or you can roll it, and then everybody does that activity together. It's just a quick break between the lessons. It helps kids refocus, um, especially my kids. <laughs> Because a lot of times if you go, oh, school, 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 their brain's short out. You need to give them a break and let them refocus. Um, you know, here, be a duck, waddle with a friend one minute. You know, uh, and these are just fun in general. Uh, let's see, place a pencil on the floor, jump over it ten times. Uh, let's see... One minute dance party. That's a favorite. Uh, crawl like a baby. These are just all different kinds of things that get your kid out of their chair, out of the lesson, out of that headspace for a minute, and just let them whoo, get all their wiggles out before they, they go back into the regular lesson. This can really help, especially if your kids have attention issues, to just bring them back into the moment. Um, Timers. These are fun. You can pick up at the Dollar Tree, you can pick up at, at Oriental Trading Company, whatever. You wouldn't necessarily think that these are going to be useful, but they can. Um, if you have a calm down corner, like I do, I just looked at it. You can't see it. I don't know why I did that. Um, if you have a calming corner, which is something that um, my kid's teacher had, and I really thought it was a great idea. They just need to take a break. They need to chill for a minute. They can go flip over the hourglass, although it's a minute glass, and just take a minute, breathe, and then go back into the activity. Works a lot better than timeout, works a lot better than yelling. As parents, sometimes we end up yelling when we don't intend to. Sometimes just taking a break is a better solution. Also, these are really useful when combined with these so that you know how long to spend. Uh, moving on from there, these are fun for just holding supplies. You can pick them up at the Dollar Tree. No big deal, but they make life so much easier. I'm going to sound like an advertisement for a you know, trading company, but they have games like this. This is Match an Emotion, and it's geared towards pre-K. And you're going to sit there and go, Kathy, what? Why? Um... It might seem instinctive, but kids actually don't learn how to read emotions on facial expressions and things like that without some coaching because it can be very, it, emotions are very confusing for adults, much less kids. So there's a game that can help people, children specifically, but people, if you know somebody who has trouble with this, um based on the facial expression of these little characters, 
you identify and put it with the ladybug. Sounds silly, but kids love it. My kids will not stop playing it. You're gonna remember these, or things that were similar to these, probably. These are called file folder games. And this one is also from Oriental Trading Company. They had a box that was like 10 bucks. And I was like, ooh, gotta try that. These are games that are focused on different subjects and you can insert them into lesson plans, you can insert them into centers, all kinds of things you can do with them when you just need a break and they need a break too. File folder game. I made my own version of a file folder game. You can see how beautiful it is where I took um, these paw prints they're colored paw prints that I picked up at the teacher supply store. Um, I think it was it was either my mom or I, but she gave we we got these paw prints together. We were there together on the same trip. Um, and I put the number one through twenty. Oops, twenty numbers one through twenty on here, and the idea is that your child takes a clothespin or some other kind of clip and clips one onto the, the paw, two onto the paws. You can step it up and make it a color matching game too by um, giving them colored clothespins. Works out pretty well. Uh, so that's a game that I made up. I'm sure that somewhere out there there's somebody who's made the same game and is selling it for God knows how much on Amazon, but you can do it yourself pretty easily. Um, this is an Amazon find that my mom found, and this is matching letters. So it shows a picture of the word, and then of course the kids have these letters on dice to help them find it. My kids have looked at it and been like, ooh, we really want to play this, so we're going to be using that. And then this is a math game that we picked up for a little bit of nothing. So those are all games and supplementary things that you can buy. There are things you probably have around your house that'll do the same thing. For example, Candyland. I don't know anybody who doesn't really have a copy of Candyland laying around. Uh, Candyland is good because it's sequencing, it's colors, pattern building, all kinds of great things. When all else fails and you're just done with the day, pull out Candyland and play with your kids. Kids learn through play. That is their biggest job. So I have collected, these are, you probably recognize them, Scrabble tiles. I got, a, went to the thrift store before the pandemic and uh, I ended up finding a bunch of these little Scrabble tiles from incomplete sets of Scrabble games for like 25 or 30 cents a box. These are super useful when you're wanting kids to start forming words and letters and recognition. So that's something you can do. I actually took a, a snack container and covered it and made it pretty and labeled it. You can, you can't, you can be extra like me. It doesn't really matter. These are the clothespins I was telling you about for the games. You can use them for all different kinds of things. And you can get them plain. You can color them. You can buy them colored. Whatever. Um, you might recognize these. These probably are living on your fridge at home. These are tons of fun for kids because most of the little dry erase boards Next thing on the list that I was going to show you, dry erase boards that you pick up from the Dollar Tree are actually magnetic. I know that sounds crazy, but they are. So that makes these little magnetic uh, letters a lot of fun for uh, manipulative activities as well as still, once again, reinforcing the letters. Counters. Do you guys remember these? Your teacher probably had a bunch of these when you were in first, second, and third grade. Mine are sharks because my kids are obsessed with baby shark. 
okay? And I have like three different colors. So you can do all kinds of patterning and sequencing, sorting, matching, addition, subtraction. You can do all kinds, you can use them as game pieces, all kinds of stuff with counters. Mine came from Oriental Trading Company and they were like 70 or 80, maybe 140, I don't really remember, somewhere around 100 of them for like 10 or 11 bucks. So, oh, goodness, it's not cooperating. All right, and then these, I found these at the Dollar Tree. These are really great for manipulation. You can have the kids pick up uh, pom-poms and use them to sort them into, for instance, a box. So these are tons of fun. Relatively inexpensive if you don't already have them. I don't know if anybody recognizes this thing. Okay, my kids got this for Christmas one year. And it is actually a stem um, coating. It's called a Codapillar. You can have, I think there's another variation of it. Oh, my goodness. With like a little kitty or a dinosaur. The same thing. It's different uh, coding things that you can work with with kids. You probably already have something like that in your child's um, toy area. Look for things in your kid's toy area that you can repurpose for learning through play. And uh, if you have any questions, any really, really great toys or learning tools that you've discovered, Please, 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 by all means, leave a comment in the video, um, in the link, in the comment section below. It's really late, guys. It's like midnight. I totally apologize. Um, and then from here, whew, I think I'm done for the night. So I'll see you guys in a day or two when I start going over outlines and lesson plans and hopefully working into doing, um some online online learning with you guys or video learning I guess is what it would be called all right well peace have fun have a great night and thank you again